Matt is the architect of South Africa. I don't think the country would exist at all if it wasn't for him. And there are historians who don't agree with me, but I think if you track through the many crises that the country faced under the period in which he was in charge of the state, he really is the key. He's the figure that holds the whole country together. I really don't think union would have happened if Smuts hadn't to hold the thing together. His primary collaborator is Merriman. Merriman doesn't have the constituency. He can't really hold the Boers and the English together in the way that Smuts was able to. You can say the same thing about 1922. In 1922, the state comes very close to falling over. And it has in before, there are several events. 1914 is exactly the same, in which the rebellion essentially threatens the state to come very, very close to falling over altogether. And Smuts holds the, the thing together. But at the same time, if you look at the, the difficulties we face now, uh, and there are many, but the first one is the weakness of local government. So if you look at how bad administration, uh, tax collection, the provision of basic services is in little towns across the country, outside of the three big cities, that's a function of the fact that Smuts really mistrusted how local politics would work out. He didn't want the towns to have any power. He didn't want the people in the towns to have any power. And he designed a state that really had left all the power in the, cent in the center, and in particular, it left all the power in Pretoria. So everything in South Africa hinges around what happens in Pretoria. We collect birth and death registration in Pretoria. We collect our police force runs out of Pretoria. Almost anything we do with the state comes out of a, cent a single central capital. And it's pretty much unique in the world. There's hardly another society that is like this. Um, there are many other things I could you know, link. As much as a key figure in the evolution of the very strange state that we end up with in South Africa before apartheid. If you look at the key acts that Smuts is responsible for, most of them are written before he really has any kind of imperial authority. They're written in that short period in which he's the, the basically the, the state's lawyer in, 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 in Kruger's Republic, 1898-1899. There are several laws that are drawn up in that period which then get adopted later, and the two that are really key, the one is the pass law, the basic pass law. And the second is a law that allowed for the registration of the identity of Indians. And that law is the law that was used against Gandhi and the Indians in the Transvaal when Milne takes over in 1905. And, and Smuts implemented them because he was asked to do that. It wasn't, they weren't his plan. They were, he, they were brought to him as, as plans, you know, very largely by other people who were experts in that field. He was just acting as any other lawyer would. But he didn't, he really stopped and said, what will be the long-term moral and political implications of the thing that I'm about to do? So by 1948, we have a system in place that allows the state to arrest people, black people, who are present outside of the tribal areas uh, without a document, without a pass, and it allows the state to hold those people for a week in prison. And they never have to be proven, there's no question of their being proven of having done anything wrong. Uh, and Smuts drafted the legislation for that in 1899. What the Nats did is they turned that into, I mean, it became a kind of instrument of very brutal policing. We can see many things in the way in which the Nats imposed apartheid that Smuts would have had no interest in. Um, the way the law, the anti-communism law, was used to, to, I mean, it was used on liberals, it was used on people who would have been Smuts' friends, it's very unlikely that we would have had that kind of a state. It would have been much more of a liberal state. Uh, <clears throat> and certainly this, South Africa's relationships with the rest of the world would have been different. Smuts was much more skilled at maintaining those relationships than anyone in the National Party was through the whole period of the apartheid state. Two of the most influential news studies of the, of the global political system around the United Nations, a book by a guy called Mazawa called No Enchanted Palace, and a new book by Timothy Mitchell called Carbon Democracy. These are really influential studies of transnational history. The eminent, eminent professors, one's at Princeton, I think the other one, NYU. And they both place Smuts right at the center of this constitutional order that emerges through the United Nations. The one at Versailles and the other in the United Nations negotiations. And most of that is not known by South African historians. Few people actually really understand how key Smuts is in the, in the crafting of the, of the world system that emerges outside of South Africa, in particular this idea of national self-determination. So after the Versailles, every state is supposed to relate in some way to a nation. Um, and that's pretty strange, actually, when you look back in, through the course of time, there are very few states that have that kind of characteristic. And, and, the, and Mitchell's argument is that Smuts, using this Boer history, 
saying the peoples of Eastern Europe should have self-determination.